Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in today. My name is Josiah and I want to extend a huge welcome to all of you to our studio. This is Creatively Uncorked. We are located in West Fargo, North Dakota. So if you're ever in the area, um, I welcome you all to come in, stop in in our studio, get a drink from our bar and join us for one of our social painting events. We do uh, painting events here in our studio and just recently we opened up to these live virtual events. So this is kind of cool um, to be able to paint with people in a different format than before. Um, I cannot see you, obviously. Uh, so the way we can kind of bridge that is just with the comment section, okay? So go ahead and leave comments at any point and I will respond to those when I get a chance. I see somebody already there. Hello, Nancy. Welcome. Glad you're painting with me today. So um, let's go over the materials real quick. Switching over to here, there we go. So now you should be able to see the painting. And off to the side, let me get it set up, there we go. Off to the side there you can see the other angles. So if I'm covering up the painting at all, that other angle should be able to show you what is happening. Okay, so for our painting today we have our canvas. If you've got our art kit to go, it should be pre-sketched for you. We have our brushes here. Um, Today I will be using a small round brush and a half inch flat brush. And then we have our paints here. And these are non-toxic water soluble acrylic paints. If you got one of our art kits to go, you'll be using the same paints as I am today. If not, you're going to want to just make sure that those are what you think they are. Okay, so look at the, look at the bottles on your paints if you are using your own materials today. At our studio, we make everybody that paint with us take the Creatively Uncorked Brush Pledge. These brushes here um, are a very important tool that you can't make your painting without, okay? So we just ask that you respect them and take good care of them. So the pr uh, grab your brushes from wherever you're at and just join me in taking this brush pledge. Repeat after me. I will not let paint dry on my brushes. When I'm not using my brushes, I will put them in my water cup. Awesome. So, thank you. That's just going to ensure that these brushes get a lot more use out of them, okay? So thanks for joining in on that. You should be able to see the example of the finished product up there on the top left. We are painting Groot today, everybody's favorite stick figure. <laughs> um, I mentioned those art kits to go. Let me quick grab this. So these, and I will be switching, art, or switching views every now and then. There we go. So. These can be found on our website at creativelyuncorked.com. Comes in a little pizza box. And inside you will find the canvas, the brushes, the paints, and written instructions and a link to the video if there is one. You can find those on our website, like I said. And right now we're doing a deal where if you buy three, the shipping is free. All right, so go ahead and grab those up and join us for our next live paint along. You can pick those at our studio, pick those up at our studio, or we can ship those to you. Alrighty. I'm just gonna go over the basic outline of what we will be doing here. Um, we're gonna start with the background. We're gonna do all those colors and it'll be a lot of blending. So we'll have the blues and the greens. Then we will do a base coat in Groot here, and then we'll just be adding up layers after a short dry break. One last quick thing. Um, I just want to go over our rules, okay? And they're simple rules, they're more just like pro tips, okay? And the first one is have fun. That's what we came here to do. We're doing fun art today, not fine art. So you're not going to be hanging this up in a museum probably, um, but hopefully you're gonna have a fun experience and that's what I'm here for. The second rule is no negativity because we cannot be having a fun time if we are being negative. So whether this is your first painting or you've been on a roll today and you've already done five. Um, just try to be positive. Don't, don't compare your artwork to anybody else's, okay? Mine is not gonna look identical to that example up there in the top left of your screen. And none of yours are going to look quite like mine, but that's a good thing, all right? We embrace that and accepting that now is going to help make this experience a lot more fun. So if you are all here, Nafis is awesome. Nafis is here, okay. Um, Let's go ahead and get started then. So grab your brushes. 
I'm starting with this bigger brush and I'm just swishing it around in that water. Like I said, these are water soluble paints, so the water works as a medium to kind of thin it out, okay? So we are going to be starting in really anywhere in the background here. And we're using quite a few colors. So in the background, we'll be using the white, the cobalt blue, the turquoise, and the chrome yellow. Um, and so if you look on the example on the top left, we're keeping some of the warmer colors to the left side here, at least I am, but feel free to get creative with it. And on the top right, I'm gonna have the cooler colors. This is just to kind of create some contrast and we'll have fun with that on the shadows and reflections on Groot's body as well. All right, so I'm gonna start up here on the top right with my big brush and I'm just cutting in close to Groot's hairdo or grass whatever you want to call it. And that's just white paint that I'm using to start. So you probably can't see that yet. I'm grabbing some blue now and adding that right onto it. And the reason I started with the white close to him to be able to then add the blue afterwards is because we can create this kind of halo effect around him where he's glowing. And that'll just draw even more attention to Groot and really make him pop off that background. So there's no right or wrong with the colors here in the background. If you want to add some turquoise way up there, you can too. But I'm going to start transitioning into some turquoise right around here by the hand. Okay? So we're just going to kind of work clockwise along the, around the painting. using white and water to just thin that paint out, make it lighter. Having that nice bright light background is really gonna make this thing look happy. This whole painting is gonna look a lot cheerier, something you might need today. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I'm checking, looks like we just have people saying hi so far which is great. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking with the bigger brush for now, but if, you, if this one's just a bit too clunky for you or um, you just feel like you'd be more comfortable with the smaller one, switch to that as needed, okay? It's your painting. I'm just helping guide you through it. And you notice that I am not doing a super smooth background, okay? I'm really doing these kind of X shapes with the brush. There we go. I did it with some bright blue so you can see that. These really big brush strokes. I find that it's really hard to get it perfectly smooth. So accepting that right away and trying to make it look brush, brushy <laughs> and having that be the look we're going for is going to make your job a lot easier today. All right, add in some turquoise too. We want lots of cool variation in this background. If you look on that example, um, you see those areas with that really bright green. I'll put a little bit of that right here. The way we're getting that is just by adding some fresh yellow into that turquoise. There we go, mine got really green there. That's okay, we can kind of layer it up. We can add more blue in there if we need to or more white. And then if the paint seems to be dragging along, add a bit more water in there. There we go. And although we aren't going for perfectly smooth, we don't want any areas to be a complete jagged line from one color into the next. So you can see right here, I've got a bit of that going with that light blue, not quite transitioning into this green as good as I could. Whoops. So we can just smudge that a bit more together. If any of your paints in this background start drying before you were quite ready for it, or before you were quite finished with them, you can add a bit of water in there and that'll just wake them up. All right, I'm going to stick 
to mostly blue here. I'm getting kind of carried away with the other colors, which is fine. And then if it's getting too dark, mine has got a lot of color in here. I'm going to just add some fresh white. I'm just scooping that up from my plate, adding some fresh white directly on top there. And if you have too much paint on your brush, you can just spread it out to the next section we'll be at. This might get kind of messy. That's part of the fun, you guys. All right. Once you're happy with that section, let's move on to the left side of Groot. And this is where we're going to bring in those warmer colors more. So just more yellow than we did on the other side. Maybe the sun is coming in on this side. If you want to, you can wrap your colors over the edges. I find that to be a really nice kind of finishing touch on these paintings. To get really close up to the body right here, I just angle this brush out, aim it towards that line, and drag it down. If it's not doing that quite right, make sure you have um, water in your brush, in your paint. All right, and then like in some places, like right here, you might have the color just changing too much from this side to this side. So keep an eye on that. We do want it warmer over here, but we don't want it to be a completely different background, okay? So bring in some of that blue if you got it too warm. Bring in some of that blue. There we go. Now it looks believable that th that could have transitioned behind him into that light blue we have there. Blending colors is one of the hardest things in painting, okay? So we're really starting with a difficult part here. But what's nice is it's kind of forgiving because you can just keep layering things on, keep smudging the colors around. And it's just a colorful background, so really anything goes. And when I'm adding these colors, I'm not bothering to clean my brush out in between every color. It's not really necessary because we'll be blending them. All right. And then finishing step here is on the background is just to transition this to make it connect there. And then we'll do any other touch-ups that we want to. So we're just trying to match that color, have it be a believable transition there. And so you might notice I'll, I'll do things like this. I'll bring in that blue, and then it's a bit of a stripe there, right? So we can just pull it into that green a little bit, pull some of the green up. and get crazy with those brush strokes. If it's getting too dark, once again, just add in some more fresh white, blend it in with those paints. And as I said, these paintings, none of them are gonna look quite the same, okay? If you compare what I've got right now compared to the one on the top left there, they've got some different differences with the colors already. And that's cool. All right, now I'm just adding a bit more blue into this section because it, it seemed like a bit too bold of a transition there from that bright green to that blue. So make any more touch-ups you need to with this background. Pick a few spots to maybe make a bit more extreme. So on mine, I want to build this up a little bit more, adding in some more yellow and white to get that really bright yellow and then just blend it into those other paints around there. Using a bit of water. I 
There we go. And we could darken up the blue a bit in the top using a bit of water and some white to kind of match it. And I had some green in there. I'm just going to roll with it, okay? There we go. We're keeping that nice glow around him. I like the way that was looking. Get more turquoise in there at some point if you like it. And if you have a favorite color of these three, you can, you can kind of lean the painting more heavily towards one of those. No problem. All right. If you're painting along and you haven't said hi yet, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to see who's painting with me today. And if you have questions or I'm going through this too fast, uh, drop those in there as well and I'll respond to them as soon as I can. So now that we have the main background done here, we just want to add one last thing before we let that dry. And that is, if you look up in the top there, that shadow underneath that pot. Okay, so I'm just going with the blue and with this flat brush and I'm pulling it off on one side of the plate, flipping it over, pulling it off on the other side of the plate. That way we're just getting that really nice uh, um, blade kind of on that brush. And then with that blue we can draw this really flat line there. Just pull it off to one of the sides, maybe have it go a little bit off to the other side as well, squiggle it down a tiny bit. And now that pot is not just floating in midair. It's got a shadow on this colorful background. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Are you guys all ready to move on? Comment quick if you're not. So just going over that one more time, if anybody is finishing that up, we are just using our blue, turquoise, and yellow to create a colorful background. No right or wrong answers with that. Using white and water to lighten it up and to thin out the paint so we can blend it. And then adding a blue shadow here underneath the pot. All right, let's move on then. So we can go ahead and use the black paint now. And use either brush. We're just going to get the eyes and the mouth filled in. So I'm leaving my brush that I'm done with for now in the water cup, grabbing my tiny brush and that black paint. And we're just going to fill those in. And the reason we're doing this now is so that when we want to add those highlights later, we don't have to let them dry, let the eyes dry first. So be careful around those edges. One thing with faces, whenever you're drawing a face, is symmetry. That's the most important thing with it. So if you happen to, I'll actually just show you on mine. If you happen to go a little bit out of the line and you go and make this eye a little bit taller, just a little bit taller, that is OK. What we have to do now, though, is make the other one a little bit taller to match it and nobody will notice. It's our secret. All right, so just keep them symmetrical. If, if either the sketch wasn't perfect on yours or you have a rogue brush stroke kind of jump out of where you wanted it to go, that's the best way to fix that is just rebuild that symmetry, do the same thing on the other side, and it is no longer a mistake then. All right, same thing with the mouth here. Let's go ahead and fill that in. And if your background is really wet, um, you might want to let it dry just a moment because you, you probably can't leave your hand in it. So you can always darken these later. The video that you're watching right now, so if you're not quite able to keep up with me, first of all, leave a comment. I'm reading those. Um, but also, this video will be on our Facebook for a couple of days, exactly where you're watching it now. And after that, we will move it over to our Patreon, 
at patreon.com slash creatively uncorked. Um, and there you can access that. All right. Once you have those filled in, grab that flat brush again. Make sure it's cleaned out from those background colors. And let's go ahead and fill in this pot. So we'll need that orange. And just fill the whole thing in. This orange is perfectly a terracotta pot color. I love it. And if your paint is getting a bit dry, you can see on mine it's kind of getting rough and you can see the lines in the canvas right through it, like the threads in the canvas. Go ahead and grab some water if that is happening. And get right back to it. There we go. I think we just reached the, uh, the zen point in painting. I was feeling it a bit there. So if you're getting zenned out, that's good. You're doing it right. If you're getting stressed out, take a deep breath, OK? Remember our rules. No negativity. I'll add to that, no stress, OK? Stress is bad. It's bad for your health. Once you have that orange filled in, we're going to mix the brown for Groot's body, OK? And you might notice on your plate there is no brown paint. So we're going to mix that ourselves. Take some of your orange and bring it to a clean spot on your plate. And add some white. And we'll start with just these two for now. This is not the full color, but just start with these two. And when I'm dipping into this white, I'm just picking one side to take from so I'm not getting all of it dirty. All right, so we want this light, almost peachy orange. And then we're going to add a little bit of blue to it. Start with a very small amount. We don't want to change this color a ton. Add a little bit of blue in there. Swirl it in. And then maybe just a little bit more. All right. So our color should look something a bit like this. You can make some adjustments to it now if you want to. If you want yours a bit more orange, you can do that. I want mine a little bit more orange. If yours is just too dark, you can add more white to it. And when you were mixing, your brush probably got all cakey and gross like this. So just pull it off on the side of your plate, same thing we did before. Get that cleaned out. Get those hairs and bristles straightened out. There we go. And let's continue. So we are just going to fill all of this in. Start from wherever you want. Be careful around the orange of the pot. And be careful around the fresh black paint that we just put in the eyes and mouth. And after we get this coat on here, we will take our dry break, OK? you have a favorite Groot moment from the comic books or the movies or anything, I'd love to see what, what it is for you. Mine is definitely this moment right here where he's singing in that pot, Jackson 5. My little brothers were convinced that that song was actually by Groot, not the Jackson 5. All right. Feel free to switch between the brushes if you need to. I've been saying that, but some of these areas, I'm too stubborn to switch, but they would be easier to hit with that smaller brush. 
And if you need to rotate your canvas at all, that's a good trick to be able to get to some of these areas without reaching all the way across. What's cool with mixing this brown from the colors on our palette already is I find that it just seems to connect a bit more with the background because some of those colors are present in it. This blue here just seems to match this brown a bit more because it's actually in there. So that's a cool trick to add a bit more life to any painting you're working on. Get a color wheel, learn how to mix the colors from the other colors you're using in the painting. So Groot looks a little bit like a jack-o'-lantern right now. And he'll look kind of scary for a while until we add those highlights in the eyes. But that is OK. And I had a bit of a mistake there. I carried a brush stroke over the eye just a tiny bit. No biggie. The nice thing is with that black paint, we can cover that up really easy. One thing I find helpful when we're painting things like this, even though we're doing it all in just one color right now, um, later when we're adding those highlights and stuff, we do need to kind of be able to imagine what it looks like 3D. Like coming down this nose here, what does it look like? Is it flat? Where's the highlights? Kind of picture those now and trace those with your brush stroke. So right here, the nose just goes really gently down, and he doesn't actually have like a point to his nose. It just gets a bit thicker right here in the middle. So by imagining that now and kind of tracing it with your brush, when we do that later with the highlights, you will feel that it's a bit more natural. Is this anybody's first painting with Creatively Uncorked? If so, I'd love to hear how you heard about us, what you've done before this for art. And we're filling this all the way up to the top here. So we will add that green in later on top for his hairdo. All right, there we go. So once you have that background all done, we are going to leave the brush in the water. I always just wipe any excess paint off either on the side of the plate or just on the paper towel. And then switch it around your water cup and leave it there, OK? We're going to take a moment to let things dry. If there's any spot on your background or on the base layer of Groot or the pot that you aren't quite sure about what we were doing, Feel free to ask, OK? I'll just be here responding to questions, giving it a moment to dry. If there's any spots where the paint is just too thick, you can kind of brush that out a bit more. We don't want big globs of paint on it. So I had a few areas I just saw on Groot's face there. All right, and there we are. We have. Groot in a, in a pot. But the highlights are really what are going to make this all pop. That and the, the leaves and the grass in his hair. All right. If you're racing to catch up or anything, 
if you have a hair dryer at home, that's a really good way to dry it really quick. So if when I do move on, yours isn't quite there, that's a good trick so that you can catch up. Or, or I'm sure a fan would work. You can fan it with your pl a plate or something. So we're just waiting for paint to dry. Everybody's favorite part. Does anybody have any favorite quarantine activities that you've been up to? Things that you've been doing a lot more of? I hear a lot of people saying that they've been cooking a lot more or baking. I've been playing a lot more guitar as well as cooking. I tried making crepes today for the first time and they turned out splendidly. Oh, hi, Nafisa. <laughs> the crepes turned out wonderful. We'll have to have you over. Yes, you can try some. Are you painting along with us today, Nafisa? Or are you just watching? The paint is getting pretty close for me, so I'll be moving on in just two or three minutes. So if you're not quite there, go ahead and finish up your background steps and make sure you dry it out if you need to, if you need to use like a hair dryer or anything to assist you. Hi, Brittany. I'm sure you had your hands full of painting, so I'm glad you got to say hi now. <laughs> Welcome. And these live paint-alongs, I don't know if you guys have done any before. We are doing these um, every weekday now, every night at 7. Um, every artist will be doing theirs consistently the same day of the week. So you can join me on Tuesdays. You can join Maddie on Fridays. I don't have everybody else's memorized yet. Um, but yeah, go ahead and check those out. It's the same page that you're on right now, at least for the time being. We'll let you know if that changes. All right, if you're impatiently ready, leave a comment. <laughs> so. I'm going to share this comment. Linda said that her background has brush strokes. Um, I'm assuming you mean things like this where the, the colors, you can see one above the, the next, right? With the, the blue on top of the blue and they don't quite match. The same kind of thing I said with the eyes, if we kind of roll with that, it'll actually be the most effective. So if you have some really dark blue brush strokes, let me show you some things you could do maybe. So if you have some that are just a bit too bold, we can make that the norm. We can bring in some turquoise and add in a few that are a bit darker. And clean that out. Add in some bright yellow in places. OK? So now as soon as I do that, it looks like I meant to do all the other ones. Hope that answered your question, Linda, or your comment. The other thing is that this paint does cover itself very well, so if you get a moment, you can just go patch up a certain area. 
The only difficult thing is matching everything else going around there. So you might just transition the spot you didn't like to a different spot. So it's one of those things where you kind of learn through doing it. All right, I'm not sure if that, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say, Linda. I'm sorry. Oh, is it cutting out? No. There we go. OK. We're going to move on now. And we're going to start adding highlights throughout Groot, OK? So if you look on that example, there's a lot of color going on there. So let me simplify that a bit. We have, first, along the, a lot of the side with the warmer colors, we're going to want to bring in some orange highlights. And then also we want some light, well, various shades of blue, especially on the right side. OK? So let's go ahead and start in with that light orange. So we're just taking some white, some orange, and getting a color like this. There we go. And we're going to start creating some form on this face. For Groot, okay. So let's start down here in the body because that's that's going to be the most forgiving. If we start in the face, it might be a little bit more difficult. So along the left side here, we can just go ahead and bring a bit of a line coming straight down. There we go. You can cut out for the arm a, a bit if you want, and we'll bring it in about halfway in some spots. We don't want to be too consistent with this. We want it to be very brushy and crazy. We can add some of this on top of the arms a bit. And you know what? Mine's not showing up as well as I had hoped, so I'm going to add a bit more of the I'm going to add a bit more of the dark orange in there. Okay? There we go. If you're more cautious with your painting, you can add more white. But if you're going bold, you can lean it closer towards that bright orange that we used down here. So I added some along the left side of the main body, the, along the top of the arm here. Let's add just a little bit in the hand and that part of the arm too. We'll do layers with these colors. It'll add a lot of life in here. We don't want to cover up all of that brown though, okay? We still want that to show through. So I'm doing the same thing over here. I'm adding a few on that arm. If you'd rather use that smaller brush, go for it, OK? I'm just adding a little bit here in the hand. There we go. So hopefully that was a good way to kind of warm up with all of that. And now we can move on to the face, where it's going to be a little bit more specific where we put them. So right here, I was talking about that nose shape. Now we really have to set it kind of in stone, OK? or in, in wood, I guess. Um, we're going to bring it down this side of the face here, close to that eye, his right eye, and then curve out. Okay, So he doesn't really have a flat bottom of his nose. In fact, we actually want this to curve out more towards the bottom of the mouth. There we go. I'm realizing my Groot turned out a little bit darker this time than normally. And that's OK. We can add in some white later to brighten things up a bit, too. So I'm also going to add some right over here along the left side of the face. And we can create that chin, OK? So those sections were connected. Let's go ahead and separate them. Let's bring that chin down so that we can clearly see that the face is in front of the background there, the body. All right, and then we're just going to add some kind of jagged lines up here into the top of the face. And I switched back to a bit of a lighter orange to see how that goes. 
I think both are very nice, so we can have a bit of both. If you get the wrong color on there, we can we can kind of dab that up. There we go. Like I said, we will be adding layers, okay? So just try to create that form. Just the form of the face. Don't worry too much about absolute perfection right now. All right. I'd like to have a little bit right here above this eye with that orange. We can bring some out underneath this eye and on top as well. And one good trick if you're not sure if it's looking good is just to step back a bit, squint. Chances are it looks a lot better when you do that, okay? And once we add all the colors, I promise this will look good. It can get a bit intimidating when we're doing some of this, and it just looks messy. But I promise when we add in all the colors, it will come together. All right, and let's just add in a few more jagged lines up here, creating that kind of woody texture. And then we can clean that brush out when we're all done with that. All right, now we can do the same thing with this blue along more of the right side of everything. So blue, pull it off to a clean spot on your palette and add in some white. So this should be about 50-50, a nice kind of sky blue there. And we're going to start over here, or actually on the body to warm up, sorry. So bring in a little bit along that right side. And make sure you're leaving gaps in it, okay? We don't want the wood to be blue. We just want some blue highlights on it. And if we get carried away, we can let this dry, add in some more brown, okay? Let's add in a few strokes into the hands and the arm. And then just a tiny bit over here to tie it together. We don't want to do much. On the face here, I'm going to add some starting along this side here. Just a nice strong brush stroke going pretty much all the way down there. And curve it out to create that chin. If you're getting frustrated with that painting, you're not alone. I've done this before and I'm still getting frustrated, okay? This step is frustrating because it doesn't always look super good right away. But with some time and effort, I promise it'll look good. So now we can add some of that around this right side of the mouth here. And the top of the eye and a few sections in here to create that woody effect. And let's just add a little bit into this middle section of that nose. I might have gotten a bit carried away there. That's OK. We'll add some other colors in. OK. So now what we can do is add the green into our painting. So we have these little, if you look on the top left there, we have some little leaves coming off of his arms, off the top of his head as well as along that whole top of the head. So we're going to create this green 
using our turquoise and some yellow. So we get this really bright foresty green, but that's a bit much. We don't want it quite like that. So we want to add just a little bit of white, tones it down, still bright, but now it'll be able to blend in a bit better with everything else going on. Okay, so I have some white, green, and turquoise, or white, yellow, and turquoise, excuse me. Again, get, get some of that off on your brush, on the side of your plate, so we have a nice, fine edge there. And I'll be switching to this small brush in just a moment. I just want to get a few spots with this one while I have it. So we just mostly want it along here on the top of Groot's head for the hair. We don't want any perfect lines or anything. It's kind of moss or something, I think. It's okay if you go a little bit out of the lines there. That might help it look even more mossy. And you can experiment with that green too if you want more turquoise in it. I think mine leaned a little bit more towards yellow this time. You can make a more turquoisey one, a bit of a more leafy green. All right, I cleaned out that brush. I'm leaving it in my water. And I'm going to switch to the tiny one to get these little leaves. And we'll add the stems for these leaves later, but for now we just want to create the leaves. So we're not attaching them directly to his arm. We're just adding them kind of floating out here for now. We'll put two right there together. Let's do one over here. And there's a lot of color mixing in this painting, okay? So all of our colors are going to look a bit different. Because when we're mixing three different colors together, there's a lot of different ways that that can turn out. So if yours isn't looking just like mine, that's okay. If you're not sure how I got a specific color, go ahead and leave that in the comments, okay? I will respond to that as soon as I see it. But the green I'm using right now is I took yellow and turquoise, about 50-50, and then added some white to that. So it's about one-third each. Yellow, green, and yellow, turquoise, and white. There we go. And then I just added these last two leaves floating above his head right there. And we will connect those in a bit. And then leave that brush in the water. All right, I, ho I hope these are going well for you guys. Hope they're all turning out cute, bringing you joy. One spot, I realized I forgot to add this blue is on the side of the pot, okay? Let's go ahead and add that in. And actually we can use the darker blue here, so it's kind of a different step anyways. We'll take that blue. And just along the left-hand side here, we'll create the shadow. So don't forget that there is that top section. So I'm starting right here where that section would leave off and kind of tracing the shape of that pot. And notice my brush stroke is a bit rough there. That's okay, that's part of the fun, honestly. So just leave that. And then we'll bring it in just a little bit on this top of the section too. The top section of the pot. So we have a nice shadow there.
And we'll be outlining everything in blue, or in uh, black later, so that'll help show the differentiation between some of these. But I do want to add a little bit of a blue shadow going along here too. Okay? To show that that lip of that pot is actually jutting out a tiny bit. Okay. So if there's any last spots you see that you want to add color in now, now that we have most of those colors actually represented in there, we can make some more adjustments. So for instance, in mine, I want to add a bit more orange and actually some blue along this le left-hand side of the face. I didn't really do much there. So I'm going to start by adding a bit of orange right here into those sections. So just take a step back, look at your painting, and consider what areas you might want to add in a bit more color. All right, I'm going to add this blue line all the way up against that left side of the face. This is my light blue. Okay. So we're going to give it a short dry break and then we'll add some highlights throughout the whole painting. Um, and when I say highlights this time, I mean uh, this really watered down white that you see on the pot here. We'll do that. And we'll add those in a few other sections throughout the body, especially things like the cheeks, right above the eyes. So we'll do that in just a moment. We just need to make sure the background is dry. So if you have any questions on any of what I was doing there, if you're not sure why a certain thing is going on with yours, if it's looking a certain way, go ahead and let me know. And just make sure those brushes are in their water cup. It's a good chance to get some fresh water if you need it. Get a new paper towel if yours is as messy as mine. Linda, did you get your background figured out? Welcome, Heidi. I'm glad you made it. The painting will be available on the website for uh, on Facebook for a couple more days. So, if you're not able to paint right now, or I'm just going through this too fast, that's where you will be able to find it. Okay, mine is all dry, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. So I'm taking some water and adding it to some white in here. I'm using this bigger brush. So the key to this is having it watered down, okay? And I'll show you what this looks like. We'll test it down here. And that's why I recommend testing it on yours to make sure you like this look. Make sure you have enough water. We want it to be, wherever, whatever paint you're using, we want it to be about half water, half paint. That's the ratio we're going for. And you probably don't want to mix right over your painting 
or you might drip some on there like I just did. So a nice watered down paint in there and then get most of it off. And if you have a surface that you can test it on, you can do that. Make sure it's pretty transparent. And we're going to add this throughout the painting, but like I said, we're going to just test it right here to make sure it's watery enough. So we just go over this section right here on the top of that terracotta pot and pull a nice brush stroke as a highlight there. We want to leave the orange around it. We don't want to cover everything up. In fact, I want my white to be a bit more watery. So that's why we're testing it here. Because we want to make sure it's pretty transparent. You should be able to see some of that orange through it. If not, water your paint down more and scrub some of it up with your paper towel. Okay. Once we have the right consistency though, we'll add it right there along the top and then a bit here along the right side as well. And you can even smudge it with your finger. I'm not going to stop you. Another thing you can do is after you do the brush stroke, dab off any excess of that watered down paint on your paper towel and then go over it again and it'll actually kind of soak up some of it. So you'll spread it out a bit more. All right, I'm going to add the tiniest touch of this brown that we had before into that watery white so that the highlights in the face are not quite as strong, okay? So we have that watery white we were just working with. And I added the tiniest little touch of this brown that we did for the base coat of Groot. And you might want to be using your smaller brush for this. All right, and I'm just going to add some highlights kind of throughout the body with this slightly lighter brown. And less is more with this, okay? So I'm just doing a few lines, kind of scribbling them into different sections. And the main body here, let's put them right in the middle section. Just a few. And those look brighter than they are because it's still wet. It's actually a bit more brown than it looks on the screen. And again, if you have too much on there, you can dab off any excess and then go back and kind of soak it up a little bit. If you just trace the lines you just put down. We're going for that woody look on this whole thing. All right, let's get this other arm here. And I want to just kind of trace this outermost finger a bit. And then put maybe a little bit of a squiggle in each section of that arm. So take a moment to catch up there. Just adding highlights throughout here. All right, with that same bright watered down white with a little touch of that brown in there, I'm going to add in some highlights now here on the face. So I'm going to start around the mouth here, actually just kind of tracing the top side. And then I'm going to pull some lines down in that nose, OK? So I'm starting up here, pulling them down. They can get thicker. So what, what I was talking about earlier with cr kind of thinking about that shape, we're really doing that now. We're tracing these lines, thinking about where that would kind of press up for that nose. All 
And this paint layers up really well, okay? So if, if we get to the end of this and there's any spots that you think maybe these highlights covered up too much of that background brown, we can mix a bit more of that and touch them up. We could add more of the blue, more of the orange. So keep going, I promise it will look good. But it might take more layers than just what I'm doing, okay? So even when we finish this, you don't have to be done. All right, I'm going to add a little bit on the bottom of the mouth here. And along this side. So we're just adding some highlights there. You can kind of feel the curve of that chin now. All right, so to make this smile look really big, think about those, oh no, somebody, they said that there's, looks like an evil version of it. You got this, I believe in you. They all look evil, honestly, with the, the black eyes like that, with no pupils or anything. When we add the highlights, it changes from evil to cute. We have the same thing with our uh, baby Yoda painting. He's got these black eyes, you add the highlights in, and it looks amazing. So, I believe in you. The key to it is just layers. And this is not the easiest painting, so if, if you are struggling with it, that is how we learn, okay? Same thing as when you're growing muscle, you're working out and you're actually pushing those to new layer and it, it hurts, you know? So it might not be the most comfortable at first. All right, so this smile right here, if you think about cartoon smiles where they've got that, those little, what do you call them, the little parentheses kind of shapes on either side there. We're basically doing that, but it's just out a little ways. So think about that. It's just a highlight that's going to go right about here. I just start nearly at the eye and then pull it over a little bit. That's the highlight on that cheek. So it's right beneath that eye, circles out. We'll do the same over here. And give it a bit of a jagged edge. Whoops, I got too much paint on there. So that nice watery brown. There we go. Maybe we need a little bit more on the nose. I'm just going to kind of accent this one side right here a bit more. Cover up a bit of that blue while we're at it. Okay, now let's just add a few more in this top forehead kind of section. I'm going to start by adding a few right here. And keep in mind that there would be kind of this indent right above that eye, so I won't put highlights right up against the eye. I'm going to go up a little ways. We'll leave that for the shadows later. You can add as much or as little as you want. I felt like that section could benefit from a little bit more on mine. Same thing over here. We want to leave a little bit of a gap above that eye. And then pull some of these nice vertical lines with the thin edge of that brush. And notice that there's no pattern in here. I have areas with no highlights, areas where there's tons of highlights. And by avoiding creating that pattern, it really does look natural. Looks like it could be a wood texture there. All right, let me just go over that once again, and then we will move on to the next section. So I just mixed a uh, watered down white with a little bit of that brown that we did before. And we just added some kind of vertical strokes with either brush, but I was using the half inch flat held vertically adding those throughout this section, a little bit in the arms, a little bit beneath and around the mouth, emphasizing these cheek, cheeks for the smiles, tops around the eyes and into the forehead a little bit, leaving those wells for the eye, for the eyes, and then with the nose, we wanted to just make that pop out a bit from the face as well, especially here on the right side. Okay. 
We're getting there, folks. We're really close. And if you have questions, comments, please leave those. We have time to go over some stuff like that if we need to. All right, so I'm going to use my small brush now and the black paint. And I'm going to water it down a bit too. Not as much as we did with that white paint, but enough that when we draw a line, it should draw pretty steady, okay? We won't have to keep re-dipping. So you can test it on your plate. You should be able to create a nice smooth inky line, but it should still cover, okay? And so I already have a few black lines on mine because I had mine sharpied beforehand. That was just so you guys could see it a little bit easier. But yours probably doesn't even have as much definition as mine does right now. So we're going to outline most things in black. But if you notice, and you can look on that example up there, but also watch before you start doing this on yours, we won't have everything perfectly outlined, okay? So it will be a bit sketchy. We will be going loose with it. But to start, just to get warmed up with this brush and this paint now, we're going to outline the whole vase here that he's in, the pot. And that we're actually going to just outline completely. So if it, if it feels like it's not covering, like it's too transparent, that means you probably have too much water in it. If it feels like you're dragging it across um, and it's just, it just doesn't have enough, uh, sorry, it doesn't have enough paint, um, like you're running out of paint often and having to re-dip, you probably just need a little bit more water. There we go. So now that is outlined. We have a lot of definition there. Now we're going to go and add some stuff throughout the painting, some different shadows. But be paying attention to where I add it just as much as where I am not adding it, OK? So along this right side, that's where we've been kind of saying is most of the shadow area in general. So let's start there with a nice bold line from that arm down. And then with this arm, if we picture this body having a bit of a curve to it, this arm right here is, whoops, oh my, I dropped my brush on it. That happens. So I just uh, cleaned out the black that was on my brush, and I can dab some of that up. I can take a paper towel. And it was pretty much where I wanted it, but not quite. So I can take my paper towel, or a little bit of it, get it wet, and get some of that off. There we go. Hakuna Matata. All right, so what I was saying before I got rudely interrupted by my brush is right here, this is wrapping around. And so it's going to have a bit of a shadow cast on it from that main body. So right here. We can have the arm come out. We can outline the bottom of that arm. We can give it a bit of a shadow right there that separates it. This shows that that arm is actually its own separate thing. It's not perfectly flowing into it. All right, and then for the rest of this, we just want a few kind of flowy lines giving the impression of the arm. So I'm going to start at this thumb here and give a bit of one that goes along there. And then another one on the other side to complement it. And this is where you can make touch-ups to it if you need to. So if any of your colors got a little bit out of that, you can kind of refine that shape as you need to. And maybe we add a little bit right here on this finger too, just to kind of show a bit of a separation there. If you love how these shadows look and you want to add more, you can. But really, less is more with this, is what I have found. All right, with these leaves right here, we can, do, we can outline these too. So you can bring this black line around those and give them a little stem. There we go. Now the leaves are connected. And we'll do the same thing over on this other arm. I'm not going to emphasize the shadow quite as much that's cast on it, because this is our brighter side. 
So a bit of a line coming up there. Starting at that finger, we can bring a bit of a shadow down here. And on the other side. Again, if you need to rotate your canvas, that could be really helpful. There we go. And then find any other spots that you think you might need it. I want it just a little bit more right there. And then a bit of a shadow on the palm right here. Don't go too crazy with that one. We just want a little bit there to show that that palm is actually facing up. My finger got blended into the background there a bit, so I'm going to reclaim that one. Awesome. Oh, and then we've got this little leaf right here I almost forgot about. There we go. Now it's connected. So if you didn't have, didn't have faith in the painting for a little bit, I hope it's starting to come back now. Adding these black outlines really changes this painting quite a lot. All right, for the face here, now that we've warmed up, let's go ahead and define this chin a bit. Let's just bring one and then lift it up as you, like, lift it up slowly as you go so that it fades out around there. And I'm going to do another line on this right side here. And this one we're just going to do basically that whole right side, starting just beneath that green. Whoops, I need a bit more water in my paint. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit into here. There we go. Now we can clearly see that that face is separated from the, the body. They're not just flowing together. Makes it look more 3D. If you want, we can add in a bit of a uh, cast shadow right here, too. Just a little bit more black along that right side there to show that there's a shadow falling from the chin onto the neck. All right, let's add one along this side here a bit too. To create that definition with our colorful from our colorful background. And let's connect these leaves. And outline them. Okay. Now I'm going to add a few lines here into the head. This is something that you definitely don't want to do too much with, okay? So just a little bit is going to go a long way. But find those areas where there's definitely like different sections in this wood. So right here there's this big kind of mountain right there in the middle. This one right here I'm just going to bring a little bit of a line coming down. Again, less is more. We don't want to do a ton there. Right here, I'm going to do a little bit too. And don't bring all the lines in the same amount. And if you're not sure about this, uh, just watch before trying it yourself. There we go. So I just added a few black lines to create this kind of texture in there. Really bump up the contrast in that bark. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add these lines around the eyes, and this will make them pop even that much more. I know I've been saying that a lot, but that's what this whole painting is about, kind of. We're just creating this, making this character really stand out from the background, making each section of it stand out from everything else. So we made the head really stand out, we made the pot pop out with the shadows and highlights there. So now what we're going to do, and just watch first, is add these kind of wells for the eyes. So you go up a little ways, and then we can follow this curve that goes almost down to the base of the eye. And then we also have underneath it 
a bit of a shadow here. You can kind of trace the nose, and then it goes out. Same thing on the other side. We'll start just a little bit above the eye, kind of where we left off with those highlights. And then it goes out just past the eye and then down. Whoops. Mine got a little bit dark there. That is OK. Last one, underneath this eye. There it is. Hope you all are following along. So very last step now. We are just going to add some white highlights, really mostly just in those eyes. But we can add in a few on the hand and the body if you would like. So once you have that brush clean, go ahead and grab some white. Get a nice fine point on that brush. And let's add some highlights. Once again, remember what I said about symmetry. Okay, so we want these highlights to be the same on both sides, both sides of the eyes. So right here, if I add a highlight along the left side of that eye, do the same over here. And when we add highlights, we're not adding it all the way up against the black. You go in just a little ways. This will just make this look really shiny. There's something really bright over there. And whatever shape you end up with on the highlight, just try to repeat that on the other side about the same size. And then to make the eyes extra shiny, we've got, so we've got the highlight coming from the bright side where the sun would be, but we can add some highlights of basically the light that bounced off of the ground over here. So I'm just going to add two little dots, maybe a little bit bigger, on that side. Oops. Sometimes the hairs on your brush will get messy. Just go ahead and spiral that off on your plate. There we go. Two little dots. There we go. Now he's got some really shiny eyes there. And then, like I said, we can use this as a highlight for any other sections we think might need it. It's going to be bold, though, OK? So you've been warned if you're going to try that. So like right here, you can see on that finger I added a little bit. It's going to make it really bright. So really don't go too crazy with this. Let's add a little bit on this palm. I'll do one streak here on the body. And then because I did some in the body, I'm going to add a few in the, on the face here. So just, hmm, let's see, just a little bit right here on the nose. So these are just making some really bright highlights. And this is not necessary, OK? So definitely, you definitely don't need to be doing this. I'm just showing a few other things that you can do as finishing touches. So there we go. I added a few white spots in there just for some really bright highlights. And that is it for this group painting, OK? So if there's any other spots that you want to go back in, you've seen all the different colors that we're using in here, you can touch up any of the blues or oranges. or and it, or if you covered up too much of that brown that we initially used, you can make adjustments to that too. 
Another fun thing you could try if, if this green is just looking too flat is adding in some variations of turquoise or yellow in there just to spice things up a little bit. Again, this video will be left up on Facebook for a, uh, for a couple of days. So right where you're watching it right now, you will be able to see it. Go ahead and rewatch that as needed to finish up your painting. And I would encourage you guys all to go to creativelyuncorked.com, see what else we are offering, um, what other classes are coming up on our live paintings, paint alongs. And also that's where you can get those art kits to go. Oh yes, don't forget to post your paintings. I'd love to see how these turned out for you guys. So, I'm going to, if you, guys have any, if you guys have any questions, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes real quick, okay? So if you have any questions or comments, um, go ahead and leave those there. I want to give you all a chance to utilize that if you'd like to. But this has been great, and I'm so glad that you joined us today. And I hope this brightened up your evening a bit. So. If you have questions, comments, please leave those below. Thank you. All right. I'm going to head out. Thank you guys all so much for joining again. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time, okay?